to negative news flow. Mark Matthews is now joining us of uh, Bank Julius Baer and Company. Mark, great to have you with us here. You know, uh, the <clears throat> action, price action in the rates market and the dollar uh, were much bigger, right, as compared to what we saw in equities. Uh, you just I wanted, you wanted your thoughts. I mean, do you see it that way? Uh, and because, you know, infl inflation coming off uh, is going to be a function of the economy slowing a little bit. Uh, so uh, growth tapers off a bit, hopefully not very much. But it, that's got a uh, sort of reaction function for equities. Your sense, Mark? My sense, Prashant, is that the thing that will prove to be the big surprise this year is uh, that rates will not go as high as the consensus expects, and um, that will be very beneficial for markets. So um, the inflation reading yesterday for the month of December was in line with expectations, no surprise there. But if we just continue to average the uh, sequential change in the headline CPI, for the next few months, which is 0.1% uh, month on month. That's what it was in December. That's what it was in November. Let's say we continue to average that 0.1% month on month over the next few months. I don't see why we shouldn't, by the way, because commodity prices are generally either flat or soft, and the uh, services are starting to peak in the PMI. Anyway, um, we would get on a year-on-year -year basis a headline CPI of about 3.5% by May. And um, therefore, I think there's no more need to raise rates even now. And our view is the last rate hike was in December. Uh, that is a non-consensus call, I know. But if we are right, and I, I think it's sensible to think that, then um, rates um, uh, are, are being priced too high. And uh, of course, the market would react positively um, if that proves to be the case. Uh Mark, good morning, and as always, it's great uh, you know having you on the channel and speaking to you this morning. Uh, what about India? There are a lot of positive cues coming in for India. For one, the tech earnings from you know the big tech companies is not as bad as what perhaps the market has feared. FII selling has reduced quite a bit this morning. India's retail inflation has also fallen to a 12-month low. Is the case being built for more money to be put to work here in the Indian markets, or are you cautious? I'm not cautious, but. Um the most important thing that's happened over the past month is the reopening of China. And if I had to give it a score from 1 to 10, I'd give it a 15. Uh, it's far in excess of the most wildly optimistic forecasts a month ago. Um, they've literally got rid of everything. And not just uh, the COVID controls, but they're buying coal from Australia again. They're uh, doing lots of things to help their property sector. They have. Um, gotten rid of the wolf warriors, the very belligerent uh, people in the foreign ministry who caused so much damage to China's relations with other countries over the last five, six years. So it's all happened, uh, and um, I think that means um, that China is very much back on the radar. It's and, and that means that India is simply not the first place that an investor in New York or London will look to. Uh, now, I, I still like India. Uh, the things that you mentioned are absolutely correct. Uh, but I think it's locals who will continue to take the market up in India, just as they did last year. Mm. All right. Uh, hi, Mark. Uh, morning. But, uh, you know, it's getting a little bit worrying. And as you said, China's reopening has played out much better. I'm looking at a Reuters report, and they are suggesting that the flows you have seen the first couple of weeks is nearly 45% of what the FI flows moved into China in the entire of 2022. In this sort of a backdrop, do you expect the Indian market to see some selling pressure? You know, if they are going to take some money off, do you believe we can see a bit of a correction here? No, because I don't think foreigners are uh, particularly big in India in the first place. Um, they have been consistent sellers of India for several years. And, and you would know the data better than me, Nigel, whether they turned uh, buyers over, over the last few months of the last year. I, I don't. I don't personally know, but but um, foreigners are not overweight India in any meaningful way. And so why would they take chips off the table? Uh, if anything, I was eavesdropping on your earlier conversation where you were quoting Chris Wood at Jeffrey. Um, if the U.S. Uh, has fairly, you know, moribund GDP growth this year, and we ourselves were only looking for 0.7 percent GDP growth there, and earnings growth is, let's say, you know, mid-single um, digit, 
uh, whereas in India, we're looking for over 20 percent. And, and so his point was that emerging markets can decouple, and I agree. Uh, and so um, in that scenario, you, why would you sell your India? You, it wouldn't make sense. Mm. <clears throat> and I think the other point many have made is that, uh, you know, in the uh, short term aside, in the longer run, where China coming back in a big way and being a, a, a being being kind of market which attracts a lot of foreign capital is positive because most of the money we get is through these emerging market funds, right? And India is a part of it. So you get a share of whatever comes into these funds. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, tactically, maybe near term, uh, there is some reallocation and stuff like that. But longer term, China really fully coming back in a big way to the global economy, global markets is positive. Would you agree, Mark? Yes, I would. But I would also say they're radically different markets. And as much as Good things are happening in China. Common prosperity has not gone away, um, and um, it is it is a uh, an environment which will continue to weigh heavily on the private sector. I think over the long term. Now they're giving the private sector some leeway because they need to get the economy going again. But it's not the China that we uh, knew 10, 20, 30 years ago. It has changed um, for the worse. Um, as far as the market goes, uh, common prosperity, right? Uh, India doesn't have that. Yeah. I mean, India has populism, of course, mm. but the government is staunchly pro-capitalist, uh, pro-markets. So um, I'll just give you an interesting statistic. Over the last 30 years, India returned 9% per year in dollars, including dividends. China returned less than 1%. And uh, past returns are not indicative of future returns, but... Um, I suspect that India's uh, <coughs> performance in the future will still significantly outweigh China's. I'm not talking the next six months, but I'm talking, you know, the next six years. All right. Well, uh, you don't know what's going to happen in the next six hours these days, right? Forget about the next six months or the next six years. Uh, Mark, that it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks a lot for joining Thank us you. on CNBC TV 18. Well, let's do one thing. Let us take a quick break. On the other side, lots of macro and micro data to analyze, so don't go anywhere. Our entire team will be with us. Stay tuned.